Howdy, you beautiful Bart here, and welcome. Not feeling awful spiffy, but that's normal for me. All right, so we're going to take a revisit of this, and we're going to go to the demonstration. All I've done is I've created a um, a new project based off of my simple multiplayer Steam template uh, with the new format. And I've added the Polygon Sci-Fi asset back from Cindy Studios. We're going to have to compile some shaders. I haven't done anything yet, so while it's compiling the shaders, we can scoot around the map a little bit and look. you got a um, really nice um, layout for the map. And for those of you who do know, uh, I did release a minigame on H.I.O., and also uh, try before you buy of this asset pack and the demo that was put on uh, HIO um, also contained some stuff from the ever talented I am John Galt and it was his uh, ultimate well it was uh, one of the, his uh, jetpack templates with uh, capture the flag mode. So, we're almost done with the shaders here. Really cool looking map, but there were some issues that were um, in here that as soon as this gets done loading, and what I can be doing here is starting to organize the map. Makes me a map shed folder. And let's make another one for vehicles. And let's see here. make another one while we're waiting on these final shaders here and I'll just call this props what are you you are retro so I take it you guys are vehicles and you are vehicles you are map shit. And for now, I'm just going to grab all this stuff right here. Could be sorted out later. And I'll throw that into props. Now I can minimize that folder. And you go into map shit. You go into vehicles. All right, much neater, much cleaner. All right, so I haven't set up a character yet, but let's do a quick save all, and I'll do play from. Nope, we'll set our game mode, third person game mode, and then save all. And we'll do play from here. So yeah, we have the UA4 Manny Quinn. So he won't be as useful in here. And you notice, cannot get in the front door here to go into the strip club. That was the, the first of the issues that I ran into with uh, collisions. Um, kind of a problem. You might want to go in there. Go in here, no problem. There was um, some other shops here. This one you can go in. I believe this one you cannot. Nope, cannot get inside there. You can see in that one, but no door. About this shop here, yep, no problem.
but there were a couple and now the correct way to do this is actually to um, make sure they know about it so they can fix it now these cars right here if we want to set up these cars would be no problem you can make those actually um, work correctly same thing with the garbage truck the hover cars need a little bit different mechanism because they don't actually have visible tires so they probably don't even have the um, the the socket form and the motorcycle I'll have to come up with another uh, motorcycle system alright there's another building you can't get into so what I would do is let's start off with the first one alright can't get in so I'm gonna go ahead and go to my characters player blueprints and let's see if I can remember how to do this alright so that's our view changer so we can go to first person view um, that's gonna come in handy because we're gonna wanna go into that so can shoot question mark add a new variable in and let's go ahead and drag in off of the view change and we'll control C control V to copy and paste now we can shoot while we're in first person view and we cannot shoot when we're not in first person view alright so um, now that we have those variables set what we can do here is create a custom event for shooting add custom event and shoot I want to call this fire and actually we can do this off of a different method but hmm. I want to do this off of this or off a of key. Um, for now, let's actually do this off of key press. So I'll just type in mouse, left mouse button. So when we press the left mouse button, what we want to do is we want to, first off, we need a branch. and we need to ask can we shoot if the answer is yeah then we want to drag it way off here line trace by channel and let's go ahead and get a reference to our follow camera and we want to get our forward vector and we also want our get world location so we want our location and vector and we're going to need some more room here as well start location is going to be our world location we know that we want our end location next which is going to be vector times float and I'm just going to set this for 2500 and we want vector plus vector Yeah, I'm probably forgetting something on this. I always screw this up the first half dozen times that I do it, but whatever. So essentially all we're doing is we're trying to get it to where we can get the information that we need for our line trace. And on that line trace we want to visibility is good uh, for duration 
And five seconds is good enough. So, not even sure if this even works. So, we'll, we'll find out. So, let's actually drop a player start right here. And hit play. So, it should not work now. We hit V to change our view. It worked, but it's actually getting the location farther back from the camera. So it's all the way back there on the follow camera. So let's actually change that to the FPS camera. So now it's actually the camera right in front of our face. So compile and save and let's try that again. How's everybody doing today? So there we go. It's right there in front of our, our face. We can get a more accurate view but we need a crosshair so I can come over here to my UI folder widgets and I'll create the simplest of crosshairs and we'll call this crosshair underscore W and all we want is two images And before I, I change the um, the anchor location, what I'll do is I'll make it um, size in the Y of 5, and let's make it um, 50. So now whenever I anchor this to the center, it can actually, if you set your position to 0 and 0, you're not going to be exactly in the center of the image. So you want to move it over, and if you you, you want you can sit here and try to manually drag it, but you're not going to be as precise. So we want this to be negative 25, and negative 2.5. We're getting half of these values here and same principle here but we're going to do 5 by 50 and then let's go ahead and anchor it to the center and negative 2.5 and negative 25 very simple quite ugly but you know what it's centered up compile and save and let's actually create another variable in our player use crosshair var and let's come back over here and hold down the alternate key and then dragging it in that gives me the um the set node. So essentially when we're in first person view we use the crosshair whenever we're in third person view we don't. So compile and save now we can go into our graph here and want to just get in the habit of deleting everything out of this and we will do again I hate to do this but this is just for testing porpoises use the event tick and we want to cast to player underscore base or a third person character or whatever your character is get player controller no I actually think this is get player character yes I know shut up Again, not the best way, but I'm doing this in a single player mode. Compile and save. And get crosshair. Um, 
Did I save that? All right. Get use crosshair, and we want a branch node. And if we can no longer get use the crosshair, then we want to remove from a parent so we get rid of the crosshair. Lovely. All right, so I'm just going to attach that to the end of this. And what we'll do is create widget and this we want the player controller again this is simple we want the crosshair widget we want to add to viewport and that should be sufficient so now as we're running around if we hit the V key we have a crosshair and wherever we point that crosshair and we left mouse button we are gonna get our shot. You see where it turned to green there it is telling me that there's a collision issue. So let's actually go into our player base and from here on hit break hit result. Not truly necessary because we want to get hit actor. Um, let's do a print text and the text that we want to print is the hit actor or hit component or what we actually hit. Let's try it off of um, um, let's try it off of hit actor. What I want to do here is type in two text. So now I can just run that and it'll report back as text. So now this is my little tattletale again. See it doesn't work now. Go into first person view, we left click and we we know that we just hit the the road lines one. So now as we're shooting and we know that we're hitting something here, we keep shooting in different locations and it's coming back saying strip club zero one so this is where our we're gonna have an issue with our collision is in BLD or SM underscore BLD underscore strip club zero one another way is you can just click right here and then go to details but this is not near as much fun so what we're, we're left with is we know that we have now a collision issue with this guy and that's preventing us from coming in the front door and go to collision select simple collision and as you can see it blocks us right there at the door front and back so there's two ways we can go about this and the first way we can go about it is if we scroll down uncheck no collision and hit save now this is not going to work if you've got your building set up to where everything is floating in the air now whenever I go in here what's going to happen well it's still not letting me in make sure let's go back in and confirm again go back into our shoot mode and it's still saying strip club zero one not the interior so by shooting at it we can actually get the correct location of, of what's stopping us we just did strip club interior and that's not what it is so we'll put that back at block all save and exit and we we'll go back in here
we want the actual correct one which is this guy so now if we look at it do the collision simple collision if you just did block all on or you you took the collision off see your collision preset is block all if you set this to no collision get your ass up there and now you hit play to go walking around um, that stops you just fine but still can't walk in now the strip club interior is giving us a problem so it was the other one that we had open earlier so now if we look at this one and if we were to do um, no collision then will we have a problem more than likely so now if I shoot it's going farther in but we still can't get in here I want to get in so what's blocking me now strip club interior 3 so it's this guy so then if you take this again you look at the collision on it and the collision wraps around the entire thing so that's what's blocking you from getting in there but then again if you come back in here on this one and you undo collision say no collision and this is just troubleshooting we've got three layers of issues now we go in here I'm still not able to get in so what's blocking us this time the hologram pods so then we scroll back up here we need to find hologram pods which I believe is going to be in props again another way you can probably check here um, strip club interiors you know all else fails you can just click on the root and type in pods and do that but that's not it so basically we run into a bunch of little issues with um, and it's still saying hologram pods was the, uh, the issue those guys so now I can go to that and if you look at the collision on those it's filling up the entire room so if you did the same thing here and no collision we're just troubleshooting our way through try to find out where the issues are and by having this little simple line trace tool see that's where our problem is going to run into if we keep turning off the collision then we're not going to be able to and I'll actually go back here and show you is what we did is we fell through the wall just then come this way you can see you can walk through the walls and that's not what we want so now we need to go back and oh, go back through these and this one the appropriate way to do this is actually to create your own well actually wait for the the um, city studios to fix this but short term there's two ways you can do that you can add temporary blocking volumes that you can add into the map and it will fix that problem um, 
I would honestly, short term, would go ahead and I know that um, some people cringe doing this, and you probably should, and you should not do this, is you come back over here to your collision complexity and use complex collision as simple. If you're just doing something for your own work for right now, it's not a huge deal, but you wouldn't want to do this. I would suggest using um, blocking volumes until you can actually for the walls and then for the floor I would actually just create a um, uh, a BSP geometry that was actually you know come up with a transparent texture but for the sake of it for right now this is the, the, the bad way of doing it. The good, the bad, and the ugly. So this is the ugly way of doing it. Yeah, but we need to make sure that we do block all and use complex. And I didn't do that. For now, I'm going to close you up. Um, go back into these. Make sure that I've got... And I'm going to minimize this stuff. Because they're going to slow me down from getting to this. And we want block all. The best way is to let the the actual people who make the asset pack fix it. But I would say if you don't have the skills to be able to go into um, um, the actual model itself and add your own collisions the correct way, then I would suggest. Um, setting um, blocking volumes and creating your own like a plane or something like that and we see that these things right here also are, are blocking us and again not the best method to do it by doing the um, the method of using uh, use complex as simple but for short term it's going to allow you to get in here and test things out so now we have full access to our building and no problem. So like I said, I just want to show the ugly way of doing things. Like this right here, you can't get in. So let's hit V and we're hitting the Chop Shop 01, which is this guy. I've already taken this up with uh, a few people to, to actually get it fixed in the asset pack. So it won't be a problem in the future, but you see we've still got problems. Can't get in. So the chop shop interior is now being a problem. And with all this, you really wouldn't want to do um, this as a... Um, yeah, use complex as simple because there's just a lot of stuff here. So this would be a really, really good one to um, create a small blocking volume. Add this to a blueprint and make it into the building that way. If you're not using the their already pre-made city and you're you're setting up these buildings, you can actually set up this building to be a blueprint. Add this in. Add turn off collision for this interior piece and then just add in a, um, a blocking volume or something in here to actually keep players from walking through it. So if I actually just turned off collision, say no collision, and let's drag you over here, and now we go into that building, you are right here. no problem you see that stuff's in the window so it's not like you're gonna run into it anyway if you're bumping into the shelf a little bit right there that's not a big deal you're bumping into the curtain bumping into that shelf so you could actually take and without making it into a blueprint go to volumes and actually it's right there blocking volume you grab this little blocking volume like that and go ahead and scale it get it to where and it doesn't have to be 100% perfect. 
because you just need to block the player from being able to get through it so you can actually do something like that and I should do that that would be good and now we're coming here to play go into that same place we'll open up the front now I can't walk into that shelf I can walk behind the curtain and hide but I can't get through that shelf and that honestly would save you a lot on on taxing so we have one of the building that was a problem by making this little shooting tool for um, for identifying things and it was this building right here we can't get in and that's bank zero one um, I don't think that's actually the problem I think it was the windows so let's actually open up we don't need chop shop we're good with that one now open that up and if we look at our collisions you can see the collision goes all the way across so I'm just gonna take this one and say no collision so now let's see if that actually fixed that problem I hope this is helping you guys out a little bit for um, using the Cinti, um asset pack yeah so this one right here it's still blocking me from getting in if I shoot then I can see that it's the actual mesh of the building so I'll just do the unthinkable and again this is another one where you could have just done since the building is sandwiched between other buildings you can't get in from the sides anyway you could just turn off collision of this but what will happen is as soon as you walk in you'll fall through the floor you don't want that so you'd end up having to you know I've never actually tried putting a blocking volume down on the ground so let's actually experiment with that and we'll save this go to test map and make sure world setting third person game mode okay so we see we just got a, a basic map here what happens if we take a blocking volume and we place this down I'm gonna go ahead and put it at zero zero and let's actually scale it yeah so I've never tried setting up a, um, a blocking volume really I, I said I, I, that would actually be something cool to play around with because um, yeah so you can actually put a blocking volume in for your floor so for the Cindy you know, you know problem of having to not do that you could actually put the blocking volume in as a floor I just have never done that and that would actually probably be a lot smoother than doing well I'm sure it'd be a lot smoother than doing the um, the uh, use complex is simple still working on on learning how to do um, the placing floor tiles down because what I like to do is do a creative mode map where essentially you pull up a menu and you can then select the different tiles none why is it reporting back none All right, I gotta have a Cindy Studio character. Oh, that'd be cool. Yeah, see, I like help, helping other channels out. You know, I I have a really small channel, and I just try to to muddle through as I can. I'm an old fart, so you know, you know, I probably should get some gist from in and you know, color up all this um, awesomeness. For the scruffiness. 
characters. Holy crap, Speckle, there's a whole bunch of characters. Instead of doing my normal, I'm just going to go ahead and just retard it to use these guys. I'm not going to add any other asset packs in here. This is just going to be solely um, this one. Um, I've already done a try before you buy for this asset pack, and I've also done a shooter demo. But let's just start off with this. We'll do an unarmed animation. And we need. And I keep getting people telling me other ways of doing this, but I don't know. This this method works for retargeting. I just select humanoid rig, grab the upper arm, rotate it up by 50, the lower arm, rotate it down by 10, and back by 20, and then grab the hand and raise it up by 10. This method works for me. It's simple. It works a lot smoother than previous versions that I've done. And use current pose. And save. So now whenever I go in here to retarget the the animations, I just right click on the third person animation blueprint, use the sci-fi character, I want to replace the third person. I don't know why I add the underscore, but I do. I'm weird. I admit it. I'm proud of it. <laughs> and I'm just going to call this unarmed underscore. Then change the folder to do, 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 assholes. I mean assets. No. Nope. And I'm sorry. I just like saying assholes. Um. um Nope, being stupid here. Uh, do, 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 do. Characters, and I need animations. Get your ass in there. Thank you. Now it's in the right place, and now I can continue what I was doing. Change. Characters, animations, unarmed. Okay, and retarget, and we're good. Save all. Go to character blueprints. And let's go to our view part. Change our Manny Quinn. Rich man. We're going to be the rich male. That sounds good. And we'll choose the unarmed animation. Oh, you are such an idiot. <sighs> I know. It works. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just the name is wrong. I told you to use a certain name, and I want you to use that certain name. It's hell when you start getting old. You just get, like, mean and nasty all the freaking time. Third person underscore um, armed underscore. I did this earlier and it, it lost that information. Hell, even Unreal Engine 4 is getting um, CRS disease. CRS stands for can't remember shit. Gee, you're still third person. Why? Why did you come back as third person animation blueprint? What in the hell? I'm going to do this one more time. Um, third person animation blueprint. Retarget. Duplicate. Off of the sci-fi skeleton. I am replacing third person underscore with unarmed and I, I spelled it correctly what is the problem this is also proof that Unreal Engine 4 just hates me see I'm replacing third person with unarmed 
and you look at this bullshit. It is still coming back as unarmed animation blueprint. Here, okay, never mind. It's still the animations. All right, all right, all right. Settle down. I'm just getting old and cranky. Haven't eaten anything yet today. All right. So go back into our mesh animation class unarmed. So we can see in our viewport, dude's working just fine, but now he has a new hat of a freaking camera. Coolio, thank you for the sub, and sorry for the noisy airplane going over. Look well, really close to the airport, so, um, aren't we sexy? So I need to move the camera a little bit, just to fix that issue. FPS camera, I am going to, because I know how much UE4 hates me, uncheck real time. And yes, even though it's pointing straight up and down, it's in theory still working correctly. So let's compile and save. It's a little better. Hey, I saw you, you posted somewhere else on one of the Cinti videos. I've got the horses. I know. Well, I don't give a damn if you got them. I don't have them. Check on me on, on my Discord channel, and uh, I might be able to help you out a little bit. And I've inquired on when we're going to get the um, the horsies. So I'm actually going to move that just a little bit more. And we're still seeing through ourselves. But that's just the issue of, of the, the way that the head and the, the neck and the, everything else works. Um, there's also, and I'm going to go to the wrong location because I'm old and I'm shit. Project settings. Um... Not a rendering. Well, Discord's free, so it's you know not like it's a huge thing. But yeah, I, I um yeah, get with me on, on my Discord channel and I'll I'll get you in the right direction on that one. Um, I'm gonna hook you up a little bit for helping me out yesterday. Uh, I'm trying not to sneeze again. Um, yeah, so. To point out what I'm trying to do here, and I said I'm old and shit, and can't remember, there was an option, there was a window you can open up, and I thought it was in project settings, I, then again, I might, you know, I'm pretty sure I'm wrong, but, um... what it was a setting I don't think it's in editor preferences pretty sure it was in project settings that allowed you to change what was actually you know the, the clipping for cameras and stuff and I don't remember what it actually is I know it's not that. Um, I, I thought it was rendering or something of that nature, but it was, um, like I said, it allowed you to, um, maybe it was collision? Yeah, I think it was this um, um, collision and trace channels. You could actually add in a... Um, Uh, a setting for this to be able to change it to where you're, you're not clipping through your character but you know the biggest thing here was being able to set up that tool and run that because who doesn't like playing with your own tool right you know no comment so yeah the, the biggest thing I was checking here was like with um, if I were to come in here to the Cinti assets now 
We're done playing with our characters, close player base. And if we go to buildings, one of the ones that we had problems with was a chop shop. So I'm purposely going to hang it off the edge here. And the pivot point. Now, it's all right for the pivot point to be here. So we can see that the building width is one, two, three, four, five hundred 500 wide, which is, which is good. Everything is 500 by 500. So let's actually take it and negative 250. That will center it up perfectly on our map. Now if we come over here, what we did do initially was we did that techy thing of doing use complex as simple. But let's actually turn let's go back to project default. Alright, yeah. Thanks for that. So we're going to turn off collision. So with no collision whatsoever, then what will happen is as soon as we walk in here, we're going to fall through. So to solve that issue, without having to use the complex, as we were saying before, just grab a blocking volume. And we know that we needed to make it, and I'm going to go ahead and drag this off to the side for just a moment here we're gonna make it in our dimensions we want it to be 500 wide we know that much but I want to size it up on the blocks and this is exactly why I don't put a material on my floor in my test maps no problem Lynch. Um, yeah techno acts for the music love techno acts good stuff so we're at 200, so let's actually, that's 400, and that should be 500. So now that we have it 500 wide, let's get our dimensions. If you mouse over this, it's showing 521 by 1048. So let's actually just, and we see this is 2.5 times on this axis here. So if we actually do it this way, we can go ahead and round that up to 5. That should be the same footprint as the building. So now, if we set this to negative 250, notice that this one, the, the blocking volume, the pivot's in the center, so we actually have to put that at zero. And we want the height of that to be 0.1 and we'll set it down to zero height and actually that's not bad but we want a little bit lower than that so we could actually just lower it down to this is where having it set at five you have a bit more control we want it to be just proud of the ground so now if we hit play and we walk over here and walk into it now we can walk on it but we don't have the walls we will fall through the walls so again and we also have this area right here and a bench so instead of using the uh, thing I'll just go ahead and put another couple more blocking volumes in so this one and just size it up get it close and I want to snap this to five as as well here so for this scale setting is 0.25 maybe a little bit too much for us here That's actually pretty good. And we want to make it to where it covers the building. Or, in this case, the um, 
the bench, and that's good. And then, if you wanted to, you could actually just do Control C, Control V. So just copy and paste, and rescale this one to fit your your needs. So you see how it's either too short or too wide. At two five. Let's do it at um, point one two five. You know what? That'll be good enough. We're just going to set this in where the wall is. So it's sticking through both. And we just want to make it a little bit wider. Now what I would do on this particular situation is make it go all the way to the door. And I would cover the window as well. Because you're not really going to be jumping through that window. Now we still have it on the side walls. This seems like a lot of work, but here's the thing: is that's lovely. We can't go through there. Um, can't go through there. But you see, we can jump through the top. You could do this, and this would be a great short term. But you know, I'm going to go back to using that as block all and that and save if you start getting too complex then you're, you're going to be too complex but Senti has been made aware of these issues so hopefully they'll take care of them so hopefully this gives a nice little bit of insight here I personally love having the um, the line trace tool. I created that just you know as a tattletale tool for reporting back what you're actually hitting. This is none. Um, yeah, I'll have to fix the uh, the viewport. But that little tattletale tool will help you to uh, identify problem areas in your maps and things like that because you can aim at it. At some point, you'd want to go ahead and let's actually leave that open and particles. You've got booster flame, exhaust flame, fire, rain, rain splash, smoke, and steam. Um, let's add the rain in here. something I did not add in. It's a nice little extra touch. Um, and you add that one as well. Put that at zero, zero, and zero. So now when you go in, that effect doesn't match the overall width here, but it's alright. We can take rain splash and Nah, I don't like that. That doesn't scale. Yeah, I never messed with this one before. But it is nice being able to have some effects. Probably want that to follow the character <laughs> whether you're in an outdoor area. So this is why I create test maps is just for that. Test things out. Vehicles, props, miscellaneous. So many cool things in here. It does come with some icons which is nice too. White ray cube, planet background, 
environmental stuff. Yeah, just so many cool things. So if you guys get questions, hop on my Discord channel, give me a shout, and um, I'm going to be in and out today. I need to go ahead and eat something. And um, I'm going to fiddle around with this sci-fi project as part of, uh, you know, testing some more replication stuff, multiplayer stuff. Since this is set up for a multiplayer project, then I want to start enhancing my multiplayer replication as I'm learning more. The only thing that I'm having problems with is possessions and eh, I'll figure it out. Video from last night shows that pretty well. But one of the things I will do here is um, experiment with using this line trace. So when I actually I'm in the map, I go into first person view, aim, and wherever I select as my target, I want to spawn something. Could spawn an effect, um, sounds, things of that nature. So if you're, you're actually using this as a shooting mechanic uh, to actually be able to have an impact effect, so it paints a decal something of that nature so what I'll do is I'll come up with um, a prop or something like that for now short term that whenever I shoot it'll actually spawn something preferably an effect um, that way you can see like a puff of smoke or a flash or something of that nature and unfortunately I don't have a whole lot in here to work with these are all looping types so if you just bring this in here, it's got to compile the shaders, but the booster flame. Kind of don't want that because it's, it's a continuous. Same thing with exhaust. That will be good for whenever you fire a projectile, that actually comes out of the projectile, but And there's a way you can set the lifespan so that whenever it does it, it'll actually um, uh, just die over time. Kind of hard to see on this background, but... Oh, uh, you know, I, I just have this, this horrible thing of, you know... <sighs> I'm old, I'm weird, is pressing the F key and that just looks like someone has got really bad gas. Pressing the F key and having a fart mode. Ugh. Leave it to me to think of junk like that. Um, fire should be just typical fire. Um, If you kept this as is, then I just don't have the, the shooting particle effects. I don't have any of the other effects that I would need. <laughs> so, I may actually grab another um, asset pack and throw in here because of the um, the need for like a, the particle effects to keep them to fit with the Cinti themes. Instead of adding something in like an explosion, I mean, short term, I guess what I can do is add new and feature content pack, go to content pack, starter content. And I hate to do this because this is freaking 700 megabytes of crap. It's not crap, it's good stuff, but it adds 700 megabytes to your project. And being stuck with having to have the plugins in this project already, uh, I wish they would fix that. Because I'm building it based off of a Steam template, then that's the problem that I'm running into. So in starter content, in your particles, you've got the explosion. So it just happens and goes away. So we could actually add that in here to um, 
Let's get rid of the print text and from this we could actually do um, uh, no spawn emitter at location and get the location from here and we'll do explosion and of course we would want to do the same thing now I would set up a custom attenuation but we can do this as well we do um, play sound at location and what we'll do is explosion Q location we'll grab from that I love if I want to use impact point or might actually use that um, but we'll just short term So whatever we point at and shoot is where the uh, thing is going to happen. So what I would do here is go to starter content, audio, explosion, Q, and those are all good. Our attenuation settings, override attenuation, and it's not bad. Um, let's make it smaller. 200, um, 800. So what we've done is just create a, um, a sound attenuation radius so we can't hear it, we can't hear it, we can't hear it. But the closer it is to us, we can hear it. But farther away, we can start hearing. That way we have a fall off. It's not, you know, like I said, we shoot all the way over here at the far distance. the closer we get. Yeah, I mean, you could use other. Um, you don't have to use that particular one. There was a... Uh, sparks. And I don't know if that was a, a looping one or not. Yeah, that's a continuous loop one. So, I would definitely stick with the explosion for now. Um, but if you have some other ones that are not um, looping, or if you want to make your own, that would be good. So now, we have our... And it doesn't have to be that. You could do whatever. I mean, you could uh, do decals. Um, let's go to assets. Textures. Let me see if I can quickly jump in here and find my blood decal. Just for shits and grins. It doesn't have to be necessarily that. I mean, I could just use one of those textures and be done with it, but... Um, all my polygon assets, animations... Um, grab the blood splatter... And just right click, create sprite, save all, and let's select that sprite. And
Never done that before, so I don't know. Relative transform. Um, let's try location there. I've never tried this before, so I might be screwing up majorly. Eh, I don't see it. Shoot myself in the face. But here's the problem. Shooting off into outer space and it's spawning at zero 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 location. Um, I don't know. It's something again I've never done before, and I I'm like this. This is how I learn how to do things. Is I just make shit up as I go along. Add paper sprite component. Oh, all right, okay. Um, blood splatter. That's why it's not showing anything, is because there was nothing attached to it. And still nothing. Oh. It's attaching it to me. I don't want to attach it to me. Schmuckadoodle-doo. Um, let's try that. An impact point. Again, this is how you learn shit, it's just do it. No, don't attach it to me, you schmuck. Um Impact Point Location. You would think that would be it. Yeah, I don't normally um, do projectiles unless they are a tracer projectile or if I'm setting up a, um, a rocket or something of that nature where it is something or um, an arrow or um, throwing a rock. Something that's low velocity that you would normally see in the air. You know, it's not like I, I know anything about um, you know, guns or anything of that nature. So, um, Yeah, I, I don't know why that didn't work there. Um, target is self. Um, let's try that. And location. Well, damn you, where did you put it? Yes, yes. Error. I get it. I get it. You know what? I'm not worried about it. I'll come back to that later. All right, well, we've gone to the one hour mark. Um, yeah, uh,. I will fix this. I will get this going. Um, I've just I've never tried doing the the sprite system before. Um, I'll figure it out. And so I'm gonna go ahead and eat something. It's 4:30 in the afternoon, and I haven't had breakfast yet, so I should probably eat something. And if you guys want to see me screwing around with this stuff anymore, um, whether it's this particular one or 
and so get with me about the horses. Um, I might know something. I might know a guy. Um, I know you can't see what I'm doing here off screen here, but just saying. Might know a guy. Don't really want to add it to this project because horses probably wouldn't work well with this. Um, if I remember, this was actually a Unity asset. However, we've got the horse, the textures. Um, I've also got an animation system for the horse and for the rider. Um, yeah. Yeah, definitely get with me on, on um, Discord. I'll, I'll help you with the right stuff here. Good lord, the mentions on Discord. I don't like mentions. Um, all right, Actor, thank, thanks for that link. Um, yeah, just if you're using Discord when you get on there, just make sure you use the, the same name or, or let me know who you are, and then um, we'll go from there. There you go. I see you in there. So I'm going to check something real quick, and then um, I'm going to go ahead and drop from the stream, and we'll chat on Discord. All right, guys, thanks for watching, and we will be around. See you.